And here we are. Welcome back to the Retro Software, where we never sit out. We're your host, MD and CD. What is going on? Uh, we're in the middle of bowl games, and I am stinking it up after getting so hot the first week. So hot I was the first week. And guess what? I was like, this is what I said verbatim. I was like, the bowl games before Christmas, I am money. Or I'm not money, but the bowl games after Christmas, I am money. (laughs) That is what I said verbatim, and it could not be further from the truth. It was actually the exact opposite. That it is what it is. Today, we we just got finished watching a couple awesome bowl games. We got a couple baseball bowl games. Obviously, Fenway and the Pinstripes won. Uh, Obviously, the Pop-Tarts Bowl, the the famous Pop-Tarts Bowl, right? The trophy there, a great game with um, Avery Johnson and Ken State getting a good win there. And then an awesome Alamo Bowl. I mean, that game's always awesome. I mean, Arizona continues to play fantastic, like they have all year. Oklahoma got a first look at Jackson Howard. Or I'm sorry, a couple turnovers helped Arizona for sure. But uh, but Noah Fafita, I still think played out of his mind. And guess what? I think Jackson Arnold played fine. He'll get there. I mean, he threw a bunch of turnovers. That happens. Okay, he played a pretty damn good defense. Two of his interceptions were bad. That one was not his fault. And then. It's a fumble. You know, yeah. that happens to quarterback. It is what it is. It is what it is. But in general, it's been really fun watching these bowl games. There have been so many really, really good games. Yep. I would have loved to know that there was going to be monsoons in the Northeast yeah. uh, before I started picking all these bowl games. You can always predict, you know, in late December, like right, these bowl games, pinstripes and the would Fenway have, one. Would have loved to know that. Would it, have loved to know that. It's, it's always going to be crappy weather. That field's going to look awful. It, it is what it is, you know. It is what it is. Tommy Castellanos, though, yeah? Dude, that quarterback room that UCF had, where they had Tom or John Rice Plumley, they had Tommy Castellanos, and they had Mikey Keene. They are all – the only one that didn't win a bowl game was John Rice Plumley. Can you <laughs> believe Gus that? Malzahn. What are you Gus doing? Malzahn. Look, they got – I mean, they got Timmy McLean, who uh, – UCF fans, I don't think they love him because they're hardcore going after KJ Jefferson in the portal, but – I don't know. He was frisky in a couple games. I that's what I'll, I'll put him in the in the tier list of quarterbacks. I'll put Timmy McLean in the frisky category for sure. But it, uh, he's about as he, he. It gets me excited to watch him play with Gus Malzahn for sure. Now, Gage Jefferson's special for sure. Yes, I'm sure they'd be happy for him. But yeah, that, that it, that's kind of awesome that to think back at that UCF quarterback room and then also what what Malzahn's done right now and in the future, what he can do there. Absolutely. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to quickly recap uh, all the bowl games. We're not going to recap everyone individually. We'll just talk about how do we do picking games? What did Dawson's Diner look like? Spoiler alert, it was pretty good this week, uh, despite my picks being terrible. It, it is, I can never get both right. I can never have both a good week picking games, ATS, and a good Dawson's Diner week. I can't do it. I can't do it. It's one or the other. And then uh, we're going to go every single bowl game all the way up to the college football playoff semifinal. We will talk about that in this episode. So make sure you stay tuned. If you like the content, like the video, make sure you do that. Also, if you like the content, how about consider subscribing? Be back for more. We're going to have plenty of stuff in the offseason. That includes transfer portal. That includes coaching, carousel. It's going to include a lot, a lot, a lot more what ACC stuff, ACC turmoil. Yeah, it's going to include all of that. Recruiting, it's going to include all of that. Yeah, I know. You want to hear our thoughts on Dylan Rayola? I get it. All right, but stay tuned for that and more. See, do you got anything before we get into the games? Not at all. All right, well, let's quickly recap these guys. So, Bull Games Part 2, uh, if you didn't have a chance to check that out, you can check that out, <laughs> even though it's, I guess, passes all these bowl games. But these are how we did picking ATS. Uh, that second part uh, of the bowl games, this on the YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, the graphics both show part two and part three. The part two is at the top, part two is at the bottom. If you're listening on Spotify, you're just going to have to follow along. Sorry about it. You can subscribe to our YouTube and watch us on YouTube. Uh, but we're not going to discriminate against you guys, Spotify guys. We'll, we'll, we'll do our best to keep you guys filled in. I went four and eight. I'm <laughs> straight up winners. I said it was the week of the favorite. Could not have been more wrong. Could not have been more wrong. How many favorites won outright? Uh, actually, let's see. So... USF was a dog. Utah, Northwestern won. They were a dog. Georgia State was a dog. South Alabama won. They were a winner. South Texas State was favored. They were a winner. Air Force won. They were a dog. Coastal Carolina won. They were a dog. Kansas won. I guess they were favored. Okay, Bowling Green. Okay, uh, Northern Illinois won. They were a dog. Duke won. They were a dog. And uh, 
Georgia Tech. Uh, Georgia Tech won. They were a dog. That is eight. That is eight of the 12 games that we covered. The dogs won straight up. Not even just covering the spread. So you know that's going to be bad for CD and I. So we both were four and eight uh, winners. We picked the same winners, USF, South Alabama, Texas State, and Kansas. All of those we picked, and I would pick them again. Yep. And I love Texas State so much. I put them on Dawson's Diner. That cashed. That was great. Uh, you, uh, in terms of ATS against the spread, you, let's see. Oh, I had Northwestern. That was the difference. I was five and seven. You were four and eight. I had Northwestern. You had Utah. Uh, and I also had Kansas, you and NLV middling it there, but you did have Coastal Carolina, so that left you at four and eight instead of five and seven. Uh, bad, bad, bad series. We'll get to the part three in a second here if you're listening on Spotify, but you can see preview to the YouTubers. We didn't do so well in part three either. Are there any ones that you regret? Because I will go through my list of ones that I definitely regret in Bull Games part two. I don't know. You you see if I didn't see coming at all, to be honest. I mean, credit for Haynes King and, and them for being able to run the ball as, as well as they did. Happy for them. Brent Keen, that program there for sure is awesome there. The San Jose State one does shock me. I mean, they went into Hawaii and Coastal Carolina just played awesome. And now Ethan Vasco's a dog. Okay, we love him. We have said this multiple times on the show that Ethan Vasco is a dog. Might be the reason that Jared Guest is transferring. But San Jose State's also a monster. I mean, how about Georgia State? We talked about them. We talked about them. There's going to be a running back that just shows up and balls out. It's not against I think it's Marcus Carroll. It's just how good, like, Georgia State can be running the football. And then also, like, bowl games in general. Like, you always have these, like, unsung heroes. And the guy had 250 yards and whatnot. I mean, he, he was yeah, awesome. Yeah, that would be Freddie Brock. <laughs> I mean, and, and college fantasy football players were like, well, what's the Georgia State backfield going to look like? It might be your guy, Freddie Brock, next year dominating that backfield. And so, uh, but we'll, we'll see with all of that. I, I'll give you, I'll give you my big one that I regret taking. Okay. And that'll be, that'd be James Madison. That'd be James Madison. Yeah. We should have seen that. Coming. And what did I say on this show also? I said that Air Force is a great bull team, right? The, the, the problem was, I was like, look, they have a lot of guys that were in the transport, but are still playing in this game. Didn't matter. Didn't matter. Air Force showed up. They were fully healthy, which they hadn't been in a while. Should have recognized that. Troy Calhoun has his boys humming for bowl games every single time. Did not cash, of course, but I will credit myself. <clears throat> Look, I picked UCF on the show, but I did take Georgia Tech live, and that's what you should be doing, too. If you're watching this and you are a gambler, right, watch these games live, right, and see what is going on in these first couple of possessions. Who is ready to play, right? Or at halftime, like when you see at halftime, you're like, okay, this team just has that momentum. Like Georgia Tech had that momentum going into halftime. I trust that coaching staff a little bit more than I trust Gus Malzone in these ball game in these bowl games. And he was starting to slip, and I'm like, I'll take Georgia Tech money line, or uh, minus two and a half live, and that cashed big time. I also took Minnesota money line live as well. That cashed, so that was nice. So I, I had a pretty decent week uh, gambling in terms of that. But Dawson's Diner for. Bulgans part two, Arkansas State minus two and a half does not cash. Texas State minus five and a half does cash. So it was only one and one for that week. But let's go into Bull Games part three. That second week of Bull Games we didn't get to talk about last week. Uh, same same old story. Yeah. Same shit, different toilet for me. I was three and five straight up. You were three and five straight up. I was three and five ATS. You were four and four against the spread. Our winners straight up, we picked the same ones, Oklahoma State, Arizona, West Virginia. That was it. And you added uh, – oh, sorry, sorry. No, you, just, sorry, sorry. Mistake. I apologize. I picked Oklahoma State, Arizona, West Virginia to both win and cover the spread, and those were my three wins. CD, you picked Kansas State, Arizona, West Virginia to win and cover. You covered all of those and won that. And then the additional one, you had USC middling with Louisville. Well, USC won straight up. Mm -hmm. So, which of these ones do you? Uh, I have so many of these ones that I would want to take back. Which ones do you want to take back? Well, well, Tulane obviously comes to mind. We didn't have Michael Pratt. That would have changed our pick. I don't know drastically, but I, I definitely would have taken them. At if you knew that, Bot -Tech if you had known that they didn't have Michael Pratt and it was going to be a monsoon, would you have taken Bot Tech? Yeah, for sure. That that worked about it as well as it could against them. And now, now they ran the ball really well against. I thought a pretty good front and Tulane. Did not seem to be the case. Miami, I have no idea what happened there. I mean, I, is the ACC that bad? Is, did Rutgers just show up? Was it a bad matchup? Yada, yada, yada. I don't know. Because uh, I thought Curry Brown played 
okay. Was, People might disagree with me. Weird weather, and like that weather's gonna favor Rutgers for sure. Ten times out of ten. But Miami was up. They were up seventeen fourteen, and then they had a blocked punt. Uh, a punt got blocked by Rutgers, and they jumped on it. Right. They scored a touchdown. Then Miami goes. They give the ball back. They did. <laughs> they were like, what was it? Fourth and like three on like Rutgers is like forty six or whatever. And they punted or something. I'm like Mario Cristobal. What? Is this in-game management that we're talking? Like surprise, surprise. It's, man. It is constantly a problem. It is constantly a problem. And then Rutgers gets out. Miami, last second touchdown. Oh well, whoop de do. It it doesn't matter. I will we'll say about AM though. It was tough. When Henderson went down, no, no, we lo- I love the way Mar- guess, Marcel Reed. He man. came in slinging the ball. John Day Walker is gonna be a baller next year. Or Jade Walker, I'm sorry. It's going to be a baller next year for that AM and rec- receiving core. Uh, D- former D2 wide receiver they got in the transfer portal a year ago, really coming into his own second half of the year. But, I mean, credit Oklahoma State, Alan Bowman. I mean, I was a guy, I was a hater against Oklahoma State in that defense, and that their defense was not very good. But their offense showed up and scored and kind of moved the ball at will against an AM defense that was just brutally undermanned. Yeah, you had Sam Matthews, who this is not disrespect. I love Sam Matthews, and he actually played. He, he was one of the defense. better defenders on the team. But just just for context, if you're not an A and M fan, right, you might not understand that the twelfth man, right, it, number twelve is an important number. That is a former walk on, right, that is playing at a position traditionally special teams, right. Colin Gillespie, if you follow them, four, recent four years, special teams. Yeah, uh, Connor Choate or, or Choate or whatever his name was, long snapper. And then you had Sam Matthews, who was DB, playing special teams for the most part. He was starting at safety. He had 10 tackles and an interception. Shout out to him. That was an unbelievable performance. When you have a bunch of true freshmen playing corner, a walk-on safety playing, you're down your All-American starting linebacker, you're down three of your best defensive linemen, and then Shamar Turner all of a sudden well, doesn't warm up, and you're like, okay, well, now you're down four of your best defensive linemen. It's it it kind of it's no and then Le'Veon Moss was out for injury. You're starting running back. You had three scholarship receivers, and then your quarterback gets injured right away. It was it was never going to be that. Marcel Reed played a fantastic game. I thought Texas A&M. There's all those players should have their heads very very high. I thought they played fine against the Big Twelve. You know, runner up, right? Not that Oklahoma State is the second best team in the Big Twelve. I think we saw that team play against Arizona tonight, but Oklahoma State is a good is is a good enough ball club, and I think A&M. Th- those players should be proud of themselves. That they, they went out there with forty five scholarship players and and gave them a licking to the end. That that's the reality of bowl season too. Like that that is that is so hard what they did there. The lack of depth they had. A lot of guys playing a ton of snaps and, and guys that are not used to playing a lot of snaps thrust into meaningful roles and they forced to make plays. And a lot of times, like it's awesome for you fans, recruiting fans. Like I got to see guys Dalton Brooks, other guys that I, I yeah. loved in the recruiting cycle. Can see him play as a meaningful game against a pretty quality opponent um, in a bowl game here in the Texas Bowl. Yeah, Jaden Platt, Mike Tease. Now, I will say I was all over Oklahoma State. I took him minus two and a half. I, I could have gotten better value, like, you know, when they were plus odds, but it, it started moving pretty quick and there were more names popping up that were being offered AM. And I, I, was, I decided to get on it before I crossed three. How did you know that I was on it, though, if I didn't take it in the last show? Well, you can follow us on Twitter at the Retro Soft. And that's how you're going to find a lot of these picks because guess what? Oklahoma State was out pretty late, but then also. Louisville was out late, and that was a, a Twitter play. That was a stinky one. That was a oh shoot, how did this drop to four and a half last second? And it, that is one that I regret taking. Now, if they were to play again, I take USC. Right? It's not so much I I don't disagree with my reasoning before. Right? How was I supposed to know that Miller Moss was going to throw six touchdowns? Okay, here's the thing. CD did point out. CD, I will say. I will say, CD said, look out for Miller Moss. They were very confident. That's why you took them to middle yeah. that. Mm-hmm. They were very confident in Miller Moss. And look, is USC still on Will Howard? Are, are they still going to go after quarterback in the portal with this Miller Moss? I've, I've been seeing a lot of Ohio State trend for, for Will Howard. Now, obviously, that's another segment. We'll get to that eventually <clears throat> with the transfer portal and all that. Uh, will Howard, a very good player in his own right. Uh, but Miller Moss, it was awesome to see him play in there. A guy that was kind of forgotten and cast away at the USC position there. Right, we mentioned Malachi Nelson in the portal. Kill Williams, obviously a fantastic player, deserving of all the attention he gets. Miller Boss came in 23 for 33, 372 yards, six touchdowns, one interception. And in most of that, and most of that was without a running game. That running game did not really get going until the very end of the fourth quarter. 
and it was awesome to see. And you're missing a bunch of your top wide receivers. You're missing an offensive lineman. It, it was really impressive to see Miller Moss do what he did. That defense make plays at times, especially in that first half. Um, and, and even honestly throughout the game, limiting uh, Jack Plummer to what, you know, obviously he was pretty efficient, 21 for 25, but not very explosive, only 141 yards. Uh, obviously, Grendo and, and got it done on the ground, which you knew was going to happen there. But USC did enough. And I mentioned the culture shift in there. I, that was really tangible evidence to see, like, they're working towards it. They're taking strides. Um, is, is it going to work? Who knows? But in the short-term sample, that, that was really awesome. I agree. Uh, one game, I'll, I'll give you two games that I regret taking. I regret not knowing that there's going to be monsoon at the Fenway Bowl. Yeah. I would have probably middled that there. Uh, I still would have probably taken SME to win, but I probably would have middled that if I knew that there was going to be a, not monsoon, but it, it was not great weather. And then NC State, Kansas State. First of all, like we can go into the details of that game and, and talk about how NC State probably could have won that game. You had a drop touchdown pass. You had a bunch of bozo stuff happen, whatever. But Avery Johnson, I get out of that game. Avery Johnson's really good. It would have also been really nice to know ahead of time, like when we were picking these games, that Hayden Wilson was going to play. Turns out he didn't play, and that was right after we recorded that. So what are you going to do? You end up cashing on that. How do you feel about Avery Johnson going forward? I love it. I, I Two of the guys in the Big 12, well, obviously, the this year's Big 12, 2023's Big 12, Avery Johnson and – um. Jackson Arnold, two two freshmen that were going to get extended playing time in their bowl games there for Kansas State and Oklahoma, respectively. And it was awesome to see both of them. I thought Avery Johnson flashed. You saw that speed with that the rushing touchdown. And you've seen it all year, for sure. But it was really nice to see four quarters of a game plan for him, three weeks to implement it. It, it was awesome. And there, I get it. There's a reason why people are a little skeptical. Like, why, why are you getting rid of Will Howard? Why aren't you buying into him for another year? You get one more year of a really good quarterback in Big 12. No, this guy's legit. Arm talent, speed. I love his processing, even for a freshman as well. And the athleticism to bail him out. If he does make the wrong reads or he stands back a little bit too late, he can get out of that <clears throat> and do things on, on the run there. Jackson Arnold, I thought, look, we talked about him earlier. That looked good. I, I think he's going to be a really, really good player for them in the SEC next year. He looks like oh, he looks like a quarterback. He's going to be in the NFL someday. I know that that tape, you're like, he threw all his interceptions. What, they lost the game. He was good. He was really good. And, and it, it – that guy's an NFL quarterback, and I, I really like how, what they're doing there. Now, he made some fresh mistakes, for sure, but he'll get there. Yeah, absolutely. I guess a really good team, by the way. So, credit to Arizona for winning that game. Who to Dawson's Diner, 3-2 and two on the week, if you didn't catch that, uh, if you were on, listening on Spotify. Texas State minus 5.5, West Virginia minus 6.5, Oklahoma State minus 2.5 for the wins, Arkansas State minus 2.5, and Louisville minus 4.5, where the losses, I'll take it. Bowl season so far, I'm 3-4. and four. What are you going to do? I started 0-2. Uh, I had one where I really pushed. You know, in real life, I took it at 3, which is crazy. And then I had it on Dawson's Iron 2 now because I thought that's what people were going to get at. So really, that should be 3-3. Three and three, But guess what? We're going to move forward. We got a ton of games to talk about today. And we got two. That's right, two Dawson's Diners play. Dawson Diners plays. Be sure to stay tuned for that. See, are you ready to get into the actual games themselves? Let's do it. We got a bunch of them. Here we go. Let's go to the Gator Bowl. Let's go to Jacksonville, Florida. Let's talk about Clemson, and let's talk about Kentucky. Now, this line's four, four and a half, depending on where you're looking at it. But guess what? We're going to pick it at four and a half because we don't like pushes here. No, we do not. Guess what I'm going to do? I thought about it a lot. And guess what? A lot of the week, I was like, Clemson's a much better team. Clemson is more talented. They have a better quarterback. They have a better running back. They have more talent on the defensive side of the football. They have a better offensive line. But guess what? <laughs> I'm taking Kentucky plus four. And <laughs> yep, that's what I'm doing. I'm somehow you know, trusting Devin Leary. And guess what? I I was number one on the Kentucky-Tennessee fraud alert train, which ended up kind of panning out pretty well for me. But, man, man, it, there's a lot of important names out for Clemson. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you want to go through the list? Yeah. <laughs> Starting with Andrew McCuba, right? He's in the portal. I believe he's going to Texas. Yep. You know how good he is. Starting safety for them. You got Bo Collins on his way to Notre Dame. Yep. Pretty receiver. good wide receiving receiver for them as well. A couple of linemen, Mitchell Mays. You've got Sage Ennis, a tight end. Toriano Pride, another cornerback in the portal going to Missouri. Highly rated guy out of high school. Really good tape this year, I thought, in limited action. 
Some opt-outs to the NFL draft. Nate Wiggins, again, two corners. That's tough. You never like to see that. Jeremiah Trotter, all all it all American type at linebacker. And then rookie or or horror. I'm sorry if I butchered that. Really good defensive lineman there up front for them. Uh, we don't know. We we will see Barrett Carter's probably gonna play, even though he's coming back next year, which is a good boost for 2024. Clemson. Don't know if he's gonna play in the bowl game. Uh Tyler Davis. I think he sounds like he's playing. A stud D tackle for them up front. And then again, another corner at, is injured in Sheridan Jones. That is three da- down to three cornerbacks. You're going to start true freshman Avion Terrell and Shelton Lewis, right? Terrell's played a little bit more, 320 snaps, which is good. Uh, Lewis is under 100. So look for Devin Leary in that passing attack. Maybe to get going here. That's what I'm saying. In like Kentucky. Oh, I was, well, I've been so critical of Devin Leary this year, so critical. But yet there were two games which you played very well. Tennessee, we had a very good pass rush, but their secondary was a little leaky there on the back end. Yep. And then you played a team like Louisville, who actually has a pretty decent secondary. I don't know what happened there. He just diced them up. So I'm kind of looking for this second half of the year, momentum, Devin Leary. You got no opt-outs except, what, Ray Davis is the only opt-out? No, Davis is actually going to play. It's, it's going to be Keaton Wade on the better, edge there. Even better. That's the only if, if that's the only opt-out, I'll take a team that wants to be there if you're giving me Four and a half points, and I'll, I'll ah, I'll take a win straight up too. I guess reluctantly. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with you here. I, I think Kentucky's the right play at plus four and a half. I didn't think I was gonna be doing this. I don't like it at all, but it's Devin Lair's swan song, and I love it for the six year senior for them. Again, we talk about positions in the transfer portal that continue to get hurt, and that cornerback and that secondary really, really. Does scares me for Clemson. I think Devin Leary can get it done through the air. And Ray Davis is obviously a stud in his own right, um, which is tough, especially without a guy like uh, Jeremiah Trotter. If they're going to miss him up front or in that front seven. Yeah, Clemson, I, w- I would love to see Cade Klubnik and them continue to, you know, develop him, see what they got going with Garrett Riley, get some of the, the wide receivers involved. We got two running backs we really love on the show. Um, but I just, I just haven't seen it. I, and here's the thing: I don't love Kentucky either. I don't. I just think Clemson kind of got buried by the portal and by some opt outs at some certain positions that are key for them. Really makes me nervous. So that's why I'm gonna go Kentucky, um, with them. Yeah, I mean, like, can you say like with confidence that you like love that pick? No, no, no. I, and. It, I don't know. Clemson, again, they were a really weird team this year where they lost some games they shouldn't have lost, and then they, they beat some teams right at, at the end of the year, which is, I guess, good wins for them. North Carolina and South Carolina, they manhandled Notre Dame and Georgia Tech, which was awesome there. So, like, again, this both these teams are honestly very untrustworthy games, I, untrustworthy teams. I think it's going to be a pretty competitive game, hence the line being under five points there. When in doubt, take the points. That's that's the thing, yeah. If it's gonna be close there, if it's gonna be a field goal either way, uh, we'll we'll take the four and a half. Yeah. It, th- okay, I will say this is one of those games though that you do need to keep a close eye on for live betting purposes. Like, how good is Clemson secondary? If Devin Leary starts dicing them up early, like it, it might be okay to lay some so lay some points with with Kentucky if they go down and score early, and you start liking that. It, I might be on Kentucky live betting. So just just something to watch out for. I'm not taking them for Dawson Zion or anything like that. One player watching this game is going to be Tyler Brown. This is the true freshman right there from South Carolina. He's a wide receiver for them, 5'11", 180. He's got over 50 receptions on the year. I really love his game. He he can do everything. He catch contested catch catches even on a short, a small smaller stature. Right after the catch, all all route trees. I I love his game a lot there. I think. You know, if Kate Klobnik gets going, I know they missed some guys in the portal, Bo Collins, et cetera, et cetera. As it's some injuries, Antonio Williams. But I think Tyler Brown has been that mainstay. I think they're going to continue to develop him and focus in on him and create a really good game plan for him to really thrive. But I don't think it's going to be enough, like I said, Kentucky. Yeah, this is not gambling advice. But, however, if you're on prize picks, which not everyone is, and or if you're on prize picks, I, get, I guess it's, it's – Tyler Brown's receiving yardage on prize picks is at 40 and a half. That feels pretty good to me. Does that feel pretty good to you? Yeah, that, that's kind of been what he's been at it in some of his better games. But or, no Bo Collins. Yeah, exactly. And and honestly, I, I think Kentucky's secondary. I, I don't know. It's going to be a 
do they show up? It's it's one of those things like you can you can lie bet on that too. So we're not going to tell you to bet. We're not going to obviously bet responsibly. Do whatever you want to do there. Uh, but this is going to be a game for sure. We're going to love to watch and, and see what's going on there down in Jacksonville, Florida. Prize pick sponsor us. All right, but let's go to the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl. Fantastic name. Yeah, where you're featuring uh two not starting quarterbacks, <laughs> Oregon State versus Notre Dame. Oregon State catching six and a half points. That's right, six and a half points. The opt outs, and th- this is probably I'm gonna put it in at least the top three of most opt outs slash transfer portal slash injuries. Of any bowl game this entire postseason. This is the most disappointing game, I thought. When this matchup came out, you knew there was going to be some shakeup for sure on both these rosters. So you couldn't get too excited. But on paper, if these teams were to play in the regular season, I would love this matchup. Would love this matchup. Let's see. Hey, I'll let you read through the list. Uh, I don't even know. Where do I start? Okay, Oregon said, obviously, Jonathan Smith and a ton of his coordinators and staff. Yeah. Uh, they're going to be juggling two jobs there at Michigan State, and then obviously um, trying to get their teams ready for a bowl game, trying to recruit at Michigan State, yada, yada, yada. Uh, obviously, you've got two quarterbacks in the portal, DJU and Aiden Childs. I will say, though, in that front, though, they might have the best QB3 in the country right there. Ben Branson. if you remember that name, you are a 2022 Oregon State fan because he was a baller for them. He was a baller in the final eight games of 2022 for them. They got their starting tight end in the portal. Right, they got their starting linebacker, starting couple starting defensive backs, Anthony Gould opting out the NFL, Talise Fuaga, stud right tackle, gonna be a top 15 pick there in the NFL draft, couple injuries, and then Damien Martinez just icing on the cake, right? Your stud, your guy that said, Hey, I'm coming back to the Beavers. I don't care what my coach does. <laughs> Gets arrested. Can't catch a break there up in Corvallis. As for Notre Dame, you've got your offense coordinator. Going to take the head coaching job at Troy. Congratulations to Gerald Parker. Really big job for him. Troy's done an excellent job there with John Summerall. Love to see what he can do there as well. We'll get into that in our coaching carousel episodes. If you want to watch our other ones, we have them up on YouTube in the playlist. If not, we'll get to on uh, Gerald Parker eventually once the bull season kind of quiets down. In the portal, you, you've seen a huge exodus at wide, at wide receiver and even at tight end. They are kind of overhauling that roster. And that's position, which I think is needed, but it's not going to help them in this game here. Rico Flores, Tobias Merriweather, Chris Tyree, Holden stays, all name stays, Braylon James, all big time recruits, big time names for them this year. Not, they're gone in the portal. You got some opt outs here. Very important. Sam Harbin, obviously a stud. You've got Steve and Jelly, I believe, is going to start. Don't know much about him. Very excited to learn about him. Audric Estime, star running back for them. You got Blake Fisher, Joe Alt, both your ta- bookend tackles. Really, really good. Two corners, Cam Hart, Thomas Harper. Oh, tough, tough, tough. But you do get good news. Xavier Watts is playing in the bowl game. And then Howard Cross, a D tackle, is also going to gonna come back as well. That's tough. You got a couple injuries there. Mitchell Evans, obviously, been gone. You might get Jaden Thomas back at wide receiver. It sounds like it's going to be Thomas, Jordan Faison, and Jaden Greathouse, a couple young guys there, with Eli Rary Don at tight end. Very new look rosters. Excited to see what they're going to look like in 2024 with these young guys and some guys that didn't get a ton of playing time in 2023. This game, though, what what, what are you thinking? Here's what I'll do. All right, you got a decimated staff at Oregon State. It's hard to trust a staff that is just not. C. Troy, C. Troy, C. Troy, C. Troy, C. Troy, James Madison, James Madison. I mean, it, it is hard to prepare when you do not have your full coaching staff for a game, right? However. I say, however, because Trent Bray is an internal promotion. Yeah, right. Big, he, big difference there. Big difference. He will be the guy next year. He was the defensive coordinator last year. He is ready to go. He's been locked in. I think he's getting these players excited. I will take Oregon State plus six and a half because I like Ben Goldbranson. I don't love the like the opt outs that Notre Dame has are more important than the opt outs that Oregon State has. I think. I think in the secondary you're losing a lot for the Beavs, which. Could you argue, was it that important anyways? Because yeah. they were they were pretty dicey. Akili Arnold is a big name in the portal. I get it. I get it. But how about this? I'll take Notre Dame to win. Oregon State plus six and a half. Give me a middle sandwich right there. When in doubt, take the points. I guess when we're picking these games and I'm in doubt, I'm just going to take the points. Yeah, I have no idea how to go with this too. I, to be honest, I, 
I liked Notre Dame just because I liked the, the trending. I, I love um, Marcus Freeman. I, I like the way they're recruiting in the future on 2024. It's going to be really interesting with Riley Leonard coming in, a couple other talented players in the portal. I don't know what to think about this game. I have no idea who Steve Angeli really is about. I, I have no clue. I can't, I can't wait to, to learn about him and, and to watch him play. Um, sounds like he's been there for a while. We'll see. I I think it's awesome. But, yeah, I, I think vibes are just telling me that give me Oregon State. They've been through enough this year, okay? Those guys that are still there want to be there, right? The coaching staff, be damned. I think this is a player-led team. I think Ben Gobranson is going to ball out. He is so awesome, exciting. Um, <laughs> was really frisky a year ago for them in 2022. Oh, damn. Yeah, I'm going to middle with you here. I, I hate to ride with you again, but – I'll take Notre Dame to win. Give me Oregon State to cover, though, for all the reasons we explained, though. It's a shame, though. This game, full strength, would be so awesome to watch. right? But obviously with the opt-outs, with the NCAA calendar, which we can't get into right now, it's it's a whole process. It's ridiculous. This is awesome. This should be some of the best players in the sport playing on this stage in a really awesome bowl, the Sun Bowl, and, and they're not getting it done. Uh, Let's go to the Liberty Bowl. Yes, if you're watching on YouTube, I still have the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl graphic up there. But guess what? This is the Liberty Bowl, okay? And it's featuring Memphis, and it is featuring Iowa State. And mention Memphis is catching 10 and a half. That is so many points. That is a lot of points. But guess what? G5 has done terribly against P5. The American has done terribly this bowl season. Terribly. Your, your powerhouses, your SMU, your Tulane, both getting absolutely manhandled in their respective games. All right, and running against an Iowa State team that ended up finding its track this year. We thought with the the controversy, with the the gambling on that team, you thought, oh, you're losing your starting running back, you're losing your starting quarterback. Oh, no, what are you going to do? You find a guy in Rocco Becht, right? Yeah. You, you have some pretty decent receivers there. I don't know. I I love Iowa State in this spot. I love them minus 10 and a half here. That that is a lot of points, right? And I've said this. Oh, it's the week of the favorite, and it just ends up being the week of the dog. I think this is a different scenario. I think you have a P5 team that's trending in the right direction, and you have a G5 team that is very good. Is very good. And here's the thing: Memphis can put up a lot of points. And the room for a backdoor cover is wide open. It is when we're saying open, it is open wide open and you don't have tj tampa in your secondary who is your best defensive player by far an nfl talent i still think they can get it done i still think they can get minus 10 and a half here i'll take iowa state to win and i'll take them to cover despite i've loved memphis all year and the way that they play their offensive football yeah i, I think two things can be true here I, I think we can be really excited about memphis this year and, and i think they're a pretty good darn good team the only and but I think they're about to run into a buzzsaw in Iowa State. I, I think this team, Matt Campbell and staff, is gonna have really ready to play in this game. I think they're gonna be excited to travel to Memphis. This game is being played in Memphis's home stadium. Isn't that exciting for Iowa State? They want to ro- to go basically play a road game in their bowl game. But I am sure those fans of Ames, Iowa will travel very, very well. There is nothing to do in the after the week after Thanksgiving, the week after Christmas in Ames, Iowa, except travel down to Memphis. And watch our team play in the sun or in Liberty, Liberty Bowl. Bowl. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I, I got a couple opt outs or more so portal things for a couple of these teams. You're missing some offensive linemen for Memphis. That could be tough there. You missing the defensive back, which is tough with Higgins and Noel playing pretty darn well for Iowa State. And for Iowa State, you've got TJ Tampa, who, who's her, or who's opting out, stud starting corner for him. And then you got Malik Vernon, right? Who's got a, a I think, a broken arm. I'm uh, not sure if he's gonna play or not. But hey, guess what? Drew Surges, true freshman walk on Drew Surges. If you were a fan back in August, back in July, you remember us talking about the Big Twelve breakdown. He was my guy for them. He was a guy that, that earned real reps for them as a true freshman, preferred walk on in fall camp for them. He was awesome. I thought against Kansas State. We will see. We will see. I'm. I'm. I'm going to go Iowa State here, though. Yeah, big loss, too, for Memphis. You lose uh, that right side of the offensive line, Carter and Pounders. 
We'll see what we'll see what Seth Hennigan can do in Blake Watson, but actually is Blake Watson hurt? No, I don't think he's I think he's playing. But doesn't matter. I'll take Iowa State minus ten half and win. Are you taking Iowa State as well? Yeah, I, I I do think there's something to be said about Iowa State's maybe strength of wins. That that Kansas State game was kind of a monster. That that was a really weird blizzard and whatnot. Uh, Abu Sama had ma- massive, you know, big rushes, whatever. It was awesome for Iowa State um, to get a win there. But I do think when they play teams like of their caliber or teams that they probably should beat, they look really really well in those games. And that you saw that in the Big Twin. Big 12 conference play out. I think that happens again here. Let's go to the Cotton Bowl. Yes. Is this line at four and a half probably at a lot of places? Ohio State minus four and a half? Yeah. Are we picking it at three and a half though? Because I made the graphic at three and a half. Yes. Two things are true. All right. We're going to pick this game at three and a half the way God intended. All right. Uh, This is a really interesting game. Missouri. You're looking at a team that has one opt out, maybe. Is oh, yeah. it one opt out? Yeah. This team is bought in. They they played Georgia close. They played LSU close. And then they won 10 other games. Ohio State will not have Kyle McCord at quarterback. They will not have Marvin Harrison Jr. at wide receiver. They will not uh, have Myron Williams at running back, who honestly – He's like their third string running back. You will not have Chip Sherrington at running back either. He believes he's transferring to Kentucky. You might have Julian Fleming. I, I don't think so. He's in the portal right now. I he's in the he portal. Plays. I don't think he plays. I think you might. I think Egbuka, if there was a receiver for Ohio State to play, I think it's most likely him and Carnell Tate uh, to get those most majority of those reps there. Does Tommy Eichenberg play? I don't know. Does JT Tumaloa play? I don't know. Does Cade Stover play? I don't know. And when I don't know things, I tend to assume the worst, which for good or for bad. I am going to take Missouri here, plus three and a half, and I'm also going to take him to win straight up. I don't love it, but if some of those opt-outs, that guys that I'm not sure about, whether they're playing or not, if some of those guys start opting out, and I'm not on it, then I, I'm going to feel really poopy about it. So I, I still think even with all those guys, now the power ratings will tell you, right, if you're a power rater at home and you're like, well, Ohio State should be fair by eight. They should be fair by nine. They should be fair by seven. They probably should be. But this is the cotton bowl. It's bowl season. It is bowl season. There are opt-outs. There's coaching changes. There's – There are some teams that want to be there and some teams that don't want to be there as much. I'll take Missouri. I'll take the points. I'll take in a win straight up. Feed me. This might be the week of the dog. It was the week of the dog last week and the week before, and I wasn't on it. Is it going to be the week of the dog the third straight week? I don't know, but I'll take the points. I love Missouri in the spot here. First of all, I love their future of their program. They are humming on all all cylinders of their – of that football program right now on the field, capitalizing with the recruiting success in the high school with William with the Williams Narani and a couple of big time recruits, and then also on the transfer portal, getting some big name guys. Yeah, it, it's been awesome to watch here. Very happy for Drink and staff there at Missouri. You mentioned the lack of opt outs. This is a very bought in football team. This game means a ton for them to get a win in the New Year Six bowl game against a team like Ohio State and a program like Ohio State would do wonders for them and building momentum. For, for years to come. But you also mentioned Ohio State having a ton of opt-outs, most notably, or transfer portal guys, opt-outs. I do think it has been a little bit overblown how much they're actually losing to the portal. I think the opt-outs are much more important in this game. I don't think a ton of these guys are real game changers for them, especially in 2023 um, in this bowl game here. Kyle McCord, I don't know how much better he is than Devin Brown. Devin Brown? Devin Brown, I thought it was kind of frisky. I wanted him to start for him. Obviously, I'm not there in practice every day. Ryan Day probably knows better than me. Well, he, he does know better than me, but I'm excited to see him. Maybe Lincoln Kineholtz, a very athletic guy from South Dakota that they got a couple years ago back in the recruiting ranks. Um, yeah, obviously, Harrison, Michael Hall, Mike Williams, this gets hurt for sure. I throw Julian Fleming there for his blocking and other, other big play skills, especially without Marvin Harrison. But you've got some dogs there in that wide receiver world. Very excited to see Carnell Tate. Very excited to see Brandon Innes, Xavier Johnson. 
uh, other guys have ex- more extended roles in this offense and see if they open up there with Devin Brown and his running abilities and all the other things he brings to the table that Kyle McCord didn't really do. Um, I think it should be interesting. Yeah, and, and I'm a firm believer that the state of your team can kind of be looked at through the lens of like what you do in a transfer portal, right? And Ohio State has not moved in on a lot of big quarterbacks. Now we're talking about Will Howard, maybe, but Cam Ward, they're they're out on Cam no. Ward. And what what makes me think there there's a little ickling in my brain that tells me if they were not in on Cam Ward, does that mean that they believe? In these guys that they have in that quarterback room? Well, you got Aaron Nolan coming in for next year. I think that certainly plays a part in it. True. If you're bringing a one-year guy, it's Cam one Ward, Will Howard. Howard, I don't see any reason to do that. And you're Ohio State, though. You're not you, you're not shying away from competition if you're going to Ohio State. I don't think people – like, the, the coaches there are employed to out-recruit to you, and they tell you that. As, yeah, I, I don't know about that. But I, I do think that there's something to be said about it. I, I think it's very interesting. I, I hear what you say, but I also – you know, I want I want to see, I see what you do, and and that's kind of more important to me. Okay, so I guess for both of them, Missouri plus three and a half, and I, the com it, I think this is gonna be a really good game. It it scares me because I, their secondary is really really good for us, Ohio State. Now Josh Proctor, maybe he plays, maybe he doesn't. But you got both corners, Hancock and Burke, who I think are monsters. I think Burke is one of the most underrated corners in the NCAA. He will be a first-round pick next year. He will be so good for them as well. Tyreek Williams, a stud. Jack Sawyer playing in the Cotton Bowl. He's a really different impact maker for them. Um, Abuka, obviously, in the slot there. It's going to be a lot of good matchups. I can't wait to see Luther Bird and Brady Cook and, and Drink try to go against this really great Ohio State defense that we haven't seen in years past. Done a very good job this year. Um and kind of revamping that culture and, and that team and the identity there. With, with maybe you don't have the, the elite quarterback play, but you have a damn good defense. Let's go to the Chick Fil A Peach Bowl. Let's talk Ole Miss. Let's talk Penn State. Ole Miss is catching four and a half. The Big Ten is undefeated in bowl games so far this year. No surprises there. Rutgers doing their thing. I think I, I picked. By the way, I picked against all three of them. <laughs> I'm zero three in the Big Ten game so far. I believe I also picked against all three of them. I picked against. Yeah, I picked Miami. I picked Bowling Green. Put very little points in Bowling Green. Just picked against uh, Ohio State there with Missouri. I just picked against Ohio State there, and here we go. Ole Miss, Penn State. Ah, <sighs> do I learn my lesson? Sometimes, sometimes I learn my lesson. Here's the thing, though. Ole Miss's defense is insanely fraudulent. It's so fraudulent. Now, we could talk about their transport class and their upcoming class next year and how their defense is going to be a lot better. I get it. I understand that sentiment. Mm-hmm. Okay? But this is not next year. This is the postseason of the 2023-2024 season. Okay? We are talking about the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. We are talking about this Penn State team that offensively has at times it's struggled, but they've also got it done at times. They've also got it done at times. So are they going to be able to run the ball on this Ole Miss front seven? I don't know. I don't know. They couldn't really run it against some other teams that shocked me. You know, the, some other teams that I wouldn't, I would have expected them to run the ball really well against, and they didn't do that. I don't think Ole Miss has a ton of opt outs here that we're looking at. Uh, no, no, nothing, not. nothing big. Michael Trigg, who's a guy that pretty much got kicked off the team. I mean. It looks like they're getting everyone, you know. Okay, I guess Cedric Johnson's a big one. Yeah, I, that's, I, that's really it. I don't see anything. I don't see anything. And then, you know, you look on the other side, you're looking at Chop Robinson, Johnny Dixon, who are, you know, kind of really, really good <laughs> players for that defense that I think can definitely change a game. And then Olufoshanu, you know, they're, of course, are starting tackle, could potentially – I don't know if he's playing or not, to be honest. I have no idea. I don't I, think it changes a ton for me. No. But uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think this this game I am actually super excited for. You mentioned not a ton of opt-outs. Both these teams pretty much at full strength. Not a lot separating these programs, I don't think, in terms of where they are in the national landscape. I think both of them are behind some damn good blue bloods in their conference, but are gaining a lot of momentum on the recruiting trail and in the transfer portal. Penn State trying to make some move, get some good receivers for Drew Alar for next year. Ole Miss obviously revamping that defense and getting some studs on the offense as well, like they always do. Lane Kiffin, you got 
Um, no Manny Diaz there for Penn State, which will be a big loss there for them, I do believe. They also kind of fired their offense coordinator mid season and they kind of been running a co-offense coordinators. Um, and they'll do that, continue continue to do that in the bowl game as well. This is very interesting. I think the matchups here, Penn State, you've you've seen them in only real two games that I can really test them on, right? In Michigan and Ohio State. And they kind of got out physical, and I thought in, a couple, in both those games, and we'll see if Ole Miss can do that there. I don't know. I'm really excited to see what Drew Alar can do, and, and and see if they push the ball, see if they they try to get him in space and use that big time arm talent that he has. I don't know. I, I'm just sick and tired of seeing five wide on like third and seven, and then him having to take a sack or throw under pressure, and and it's a it's a duck or whatever it is. It's three yards short of the receiver on a comeback route. It, it's it's very frustrating in those big games. As I'm sure Penn State fans understand, um, we'll see. Though I, you mentioned Ole Miss minus four and a half. They plus have, plus four and a half. I'm sorry, plus four and a half. They are having huge momentum on the recruiting trail and in the portal. But yeah, sometimes that's like you kind of have to separate that from reality that is right now. That like, hey, those guys are coming next year. Like they're not going to be in here this year. And I don't know. I, I, Penn State and bowl games, man, they're pretty darn good. I know Lane Kiffin does his thing as well, but. I'm gonna go Penn State here. I uh, I think minus four and a half is about as as high as I'd go. I, I would not take it up anywhere near seven, but yeah, I'll I'll go Penn State minus four and a half. Uh, I'll fade you. I'll take Ole Miss plus four and a half, and I'll uh, take a win this well straight up. Yeah, and mostly because like I I just don't know what. Like, I don't trust Penn State's offense. That's kind of the thing. Now, Ole Miss's defense is absolutely terrible. So, could Drew Alar throw for 300 yards two touchdowns? I'm sure. And maybe this is the game the running backs finally get going. Yeah. Yeah. yeah maybe. It's, and, and here's the thing. Here's the thing about Penn State's defense that I'll say. It is a very good defense, I think. All right. Who are, like, what is the best offensive team that Penn State has played this year? It was probably Michigan. Michigan. And, like, he's, like, is Michigan like an elite offense? No, no, no. Ole Miss probably has a better offense than Michigan. I would say so as well. So I'm, I'm just, I'm a little bit, I'm just a little bit skeptical. Right? Well, and, and, and you still know, like, is Kalen King off the mound? You well, don't know. I think so. King and and Daquan Hardy, both corners, are going to play for him. Curtis Jacob as well. Linebacker Theo Johnson, stud tight end, are all expected to play, even though they will be in the NFL draft. Sounds like they're playing in the bowl yeah, game, which is a big get for both of for that team. Hayden Wilson was also expected to play, so I'm well, just and that's the thing. A lot of times you get guys on snap counts. Be a skeptic. You got certain viewers. packages. You you really don't you don't really don't know. I'm gonna pick it like they're at full strength. I think they can stop the run. I think they can get after Jackson Dart. I think they can cover some really good receivers in an almost room that's finally getting healthy too. Like they were kind of banged up early in the year, and, and kind of had a battle with some injuries. Hopefully those guys are recovered. I had some time in the break there to really get ready for for this bowl game. Now, speaking of getting ready uh, and for bowl games, Manny Diaz will not be getting ready for this bowl game. Does that have a gigantic impact on this game? It for sure does. I, I think hit, that chess match between Lane Kiffin and Manny Diaz would be awesome to watch. Obviously, Manny Diaz loves to get after the quarterback, love the disguise fronts and all these things. And the, the thing is, is in, in, in a tempo that, that Ole Miss runs, you have to have good communications now, that's where I love Curtis Jacobs and Abdul and all these guys, um, uh, those linebackers for for Ole Miss and the veterans and the secondary and whatnot to really get after it and, and kind of not going to be negated too much by that tempo offense, but you don't see it much in the, in the Big Ten. You really don't. And so that's what could catch him off guard. And obviously having a veteran like Manny Diaz, very familiar with some up-tempo offenses, would be nice to have in this game for sure. It does scare me. Not going to – not going to – persuade me from picking against Penn State. Let's go to the Music City Bowl. Let's talk Auburn. Let's talk Maryland. Maryland catching six and a half. Yeah, just Billy Edwards does not do it for me. No, and it sounds like it doesn't do it for the staff either. I mean, we talked about it with what Ohio State's lack of action in the portal has been so far, right? We'll see if that changes with Will Howard, but like what you do tells me exactly what you feel about your team and the players on your team and if you go out and get a guy like mj morris right away to play for you for multiple years doesn't give me a ton of confidence in your guys there like billy edwards and cameron edge there at quarterback now does auburn have an elite group of quarterbacks there 
Absolutely not. <laughs> it is probably worse than Maryland's. It is probably worse than Maryland's. Well, with ta- without Talia. Without Talia. I, I or, I'm sorry, with Talia, it's worse than Maryland's. For sure. Talia is significantly better yeah, than Peyton Thorne. And exactly. they, they both played in the Big Ten, and nobody really debated that. Talia will not be playing in this game. I. How can you not take Auburn at minus six and a half in this game? Yeah. yeah, how can you not? Now it's like I haven't seen enough of Billy Edwards to like really just be like, all right, I'm gonna slam this on Dawson Steiner, but I think I'm gonna regret not putting it on Dawson Steiner. This is gonna be a very quick live bet, I think, for me. Like mm-hmm. if I see Auburn get a first down, <laughs> I might I might just just one. <laughs> it just takes one. I might it just takes one sometimes for me to just get a get a feel for the game. But man, it Auburn's defense is just so much better. I, I don't know, like the the really good defenses that Maryland played this year. Now they they did give Penn State a little bit of run for their money for sure, but that was with Talia Tagovailoa. Like what? They are that offense, and we've it relies heavily on Tago, Talia Tagovailoa. And when he doesn't play well, that offense is terrible. It is terrible. I don't think they'll be able to run the ball. I don't think they'll be able to throw the ball with Billy Edwards. So what what can they do? Absolutely nothing. It's going to depend. Can Peyton Thorne just not turn the ball over? And I think he can maybe do that. Yeah, I do think Maryland's defense is a little bit underrated in terms of you think of Maryland, Mike Loxley, Talia Tagalovo, good good wide receivers, good weapons and whatnot. They got some really good dudes up there up front for them. What does hurt for them is no Tariq still. Um, I believe he's not playing. He's opting out. Really good corner for them. That hurts. The thing with Billy Edwards, though, he's kind of frisky on the ground. And we, we've seen him with Peyton Thorne expose teams with his legs. Look for Billy Edwards and Mike Loxley to do that as well with Maryland. And, and obviously, the inexperience comes in there with Billy Edwards. Only 45 stamps on the year. He played a lot last year, actually, in some spot duty. Some injuries Talia had had to come in and lead some game-winning drives and whatnot. But, no, I think he I think he can get it done. Or I, I don't think he'll get it done, but I think he can be frisky for him. So I, I wouldn't be totally surprised if Maryland gets a win here, but I'm going to take Auburn minus six and a half. I cannot fade them. I cannot back against Maryland without Dolly. No, I can definitely fade Auburn. I'm just more adept to fading Maryland. In this spot, for sure. For sure. Hey, but did, did any of the opt-outs there in that, sec- in that defense worry for you for Auburn? For yeah. Auburn, DJ James, Pritchett, and Marcus Harris. Yeah. I mean, sure. But you know who's like way more deep? Like in the secondary, I don't know. If they're actually insanely deep, they will be more deep. But I, I do think it is – if you're going to lose two guys in the secondary, right, and you're having Billy Edwards on the other side throwing the ball, yeah, like exactly. is, that a, is that a super large concern, you know? It makes is you that feel a better super large concern? for sure. But I, I'm going to – I'm just – I'm all over Auburn in this spot. I, I think this is one of those ones where we take it and we put it on our boards – and it, it shows up green, right, after our after the week. And we go back. We talk about it. We're like, yep, that was the right pick. And we well, we would do it again. My only regret is not, probably not going to have it, not gonna be having it on Dawson Steiner. Yeah, and yeah, that's unfortunate. I do think Corey Dykes, so as, as a guy that would be a nice security blanket for Billy Edwards as well. Hurts, hurts that ya. matchup nightmare for you in the tight end room for, for Maryland. Yeah, I don't know. I think – I think Auburn can just kind of run the ball. I, if anything, I would take the under. I'm very look at taking the under in this game. Don't know if I, it's going to be in Nashville. Yeah, I have no idea what the total is. I can pull it up right now. The total's at 47.5. Wow, that is certainly a thought. But that that's one of those live bet situations. Maybe exactly. it's a live bet, Auburn. You sprinkle in Auburn money line with the under live bet. Maybe Auburn scores that first possession, and then you just hammer the under and parlay mm-hmm. with the – I don't know. I don't know. I'm just talking out of my butt right now. Let's uh, let's just. I'll, I'll take Auburn minus six and a half, and so will you. Let's go to the Orange Bowl. What nineteen and a half point favorites Georgia versus Florida State? This was just at fourteen the other week. <sighs> what? What happened? What happened, Christopher? I don't know. I mean, it, it's just a bunch of opt outs. Florida State players hitting the portal. Going to the draft, it's a it's a real shame what happened to this game. Two teams, number five and number six, respectively, both believe they have the case to make the college football playoff, and didn't. And a very tough in, in a game that you know the, the governor of Florida was trying to get him to, to count it as a college football playoff game and whatnot. It, it was kind of a a big deal, and now it's kind of lost all of its hype because a, a ton of players are in the portal. 
more so big name guys for Florida State. Got some nice guys for for Georgia though. Jamon Dumas Johnson. That was a surprise there. I linebacker for him. Some depth pieces like AJ Harris, big time recruits, Marvin Marvin Jones, Xavier Sorley. But I mean, let's be real, Georgia though. They, they they are deep just about everywhere. They are as well built a roster as you can find in college football. You do have some star opt outs. Obviously, Brock Bowers, mega star there at tight end, wide receiver, running back. Do whatever you want with him. And then, obviously, a first-round pick on Amarius Mims as well. Yeah, I am. Wow, it is so hard for me to not take Florida State minus – or, sorry, Georgia minus 19.5. Like, that, that is crazy. We're in the orange – it's the number five team against the number six team in the country. And the number six team is favored by 19.5 points. But – uh I'm going to do it, man. I'm going to lay the 19 and a half with Georgia. As cr- as freaking crazy as that sounds. As freaking crazy as that sounds. I'm going to I'm going to do it. I mean, I actually like Tate Rodemaker. I I actually like him. And and here's the thing. I I'm not a, the biggest fan. I think if of Wait. course it hurt Florida State. Well, Rodemaker is in the portal. He's in the portal, it, but he's he's playing the game though, I thought. Or no, Brock. I thought Brock Glenn's gonna start for him. Oh, That's what, at least geez. what I've what what we've been hearing. Yeah, I'm Is all that, over 19 and a half. Then how can you watch how they played against Louisville and think they have a chance to cover the spread here? It, it really sucks because I do think a healthy Florida State and a healthy Georgia would be an interesting game. I mean, you could argue either way. Florida State's got some really nice weapons. The problem is, is most of them are gone, right? Johnny Wilson, Keon Coleman, Jaheim Bell, Trey Benson. Those are your four stars on offense. And talk about stars on defense. I don't know, Jared Verse, Fabian Lovett, Renardo Green, Jerrion Jones, Akeem Dent, all these guys. It, it, it's 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 a real travesty to, to see what happened there. Um, Joshua Farmer, who knows what he's going to do for them. You've got some some interesting NIL situations with some other players uh, with Peyton there. So we'll, we'll see. I, it's, it's a real shame for sure. But um, I do think it's it nice to see Georgia and Florida State, some of these guys, they got some nice young pieces there. And if you're interested in that, recruiting for 2024 and beyond for these programs, if you want to see what you're made of on your two deeps and your three deeps, you're going to see in this game for sure. But I think it speaks volume that this line is up to 19 and a half. And I think we're both still on on Georgia to cover the, at least by 20 points there. It could look a little bit like uh, LSU-Purdue did last year. And that's, that's not a shot, a, shot, a shot against Florida State. I just think what the reality of your roster is right now your sec, your twos and threes against Georgia's one and a halfs and twos, it's just gonna be pretty darn ugly and and unfortunate. But but I wish I, I hope they can pull it off though. I really do. I, I hope Brock Glenn gets it together. The thing is, I, I don't know how you can watch him against Louisville, a team that just got decimated by Miller Moss, right, and Devin Leary, right, in 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 yeah. Pittsburgh. I mean it. Yeah, yes, they have an okay defense, Louisville for sure, but George is a whole other beast, and that's without Jamon Dumas Johnson and some other monsters there. It sounds like Kamari Lasseter's plan, right? That'd be a, if he a, does. I mean, that, what are they? Javon Bowler's just, plan. I mean, Carson Beck's playing in the bowl game. That's great. Lad McConkey's gonna try to play. Lad McConkey's trying to play in the bowl game. He's toughing out an injury. Georgia wants to go here and really impose their will, and I think they will. Let's talk about the Arizona Bowl. This is a really interesting matchup. You are not going to have Daquan Finn for Toledo. And they're playing against Wyoming. Toledo is catching three and a half points against Wyoming. And guess what? It's not in Laramie, mm-hmm. which is gigantic. If you know Wyoming football, you know how big of a deal it is to play in Laramie. And I don't, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but they're significantly better at home than they are on the road. They're significantly better because it eliminates the passing game from the other team because it's hard to throw the ball with the thin air. And Wyoming can play some tough ground and pound defense and ground and pound offense. So with that being said, I think Daquan Finn is a ginormous loss. Mm-hmm. Is Tucker Gleason good? I have no idea. I haven't seen enough of him play. Right. I have seen Daquan Finn play and I can see the impact that he has, right? And here's the other if you're if you're doing a vibe check here, right? Craig Bull, his last game ever coaching 
for Wyoming. If you don't think they're coming out and playing their hearts out, oh for them, my goodness, the Cowboys are gonna get after it. Yes. So with that being said, allow me to lay, allow me to lay three and a half points with Wyoming to win this football game against the Toledo Rockets. What do you always say? Save a horse and ride, ride a cow. cowboy. Come on. That's what I'm doing here with Wyoming. Even though it's not in Laramie, Daquan Finn is huge. I believe Penny Boone is also in the portal. Not sure if he's going to play or not. That's another huge loss for them that continues to push this line further and further away from, from Toledo. And yeah, I mean, Craig, well, how could you not? It sounds like I, I think Harrison Wiley and, and Andrew Beasley get it done in the backfield there for Wyoming. They do enough. Um, they're going to be fired up to play in this game. This Wyoming team that I wouldn't say limp to this trench, but they still finished 8-4, and four, right? And they finished fourth in Mountain West. This is a Toledo team that had New Year Six aspirations, and they they, they whiffed on them, right? They got embarrassed by Miami, Miami, Ohio in the MAC Conference Championship game in Detroit. That's the last time we saw them. And Wyoming, pretty physical team up front, in my opinion. I think they can do similar things that Miami did to them, um, to Toledo. And I think that they're going to get, get it done here, cover the three and a half, and obviously win outright as well. Yeah, but like, look, this is this is also a great spot for a a random Mac quarterback, backup quarterback that you've never heard of, mm-hmm. aka what, Tucker Gleason, right? Is his name? Mm-hmm. I have never watched him play football. I'm gonna say that this is a college football podcast, right? We watch a ton of football. We read a lot of names. We get intel. We we're we're all over everything. All right, we we pride ourselves on the versatile knowledge, and whatever I don't know, CD knows. Okay, I don't know anything about Tucker Gleason. Would you like to give us some information on Tucker Gleason? Let me tell you the best I can do for him. So a year ago, Daquan Finn did get hurt right in 2022. He had to play against Eastern Michigan and Bowling Green. Right, this is a year ago. He was kind of a baller at EMU. He was Offensive Player of the Week in the MAC Western Division. Think of that as what he is. That's a pretty. I think that's pretty darn important. I think it's awesome for him. Um, he also threw for 320 yards against Bowling Green. He's a sophomore guy who's from uh, Tampa, Florida. He's been there for a couple of years now. I think he, he knows the offense a little bit. He came over from Georgia Tech, where he played sparingly, but not really uh, in two games there in 2020. Um, he's a three-star from Rivals, a pretty highly rated guy compared to Max Standards and Toledo Sanders, especially for a backup um, it sounds like he'll probably be the guy for them next year, and and so let's let's get it going with him there. But I I, don't, I I think it's a tough assignment drawing, right? Like Craig Bull's last game there against the Wyoming yeah. Cowboy team. That's gonna be fired up to play you. Oh, dude, I'm gonna be pissed though because Toledo's totally gonna win now. Wait, and you know you just read that, and you just read that, and now I'm like, okay, this guy was Mac Player of the Week. He's been in the program. He knows the offense. He's confident. Now it feels like here's the thing. I'm still sticking with Wyoming because the vibe check checks out for the Craig Bull, Craig Bull final game. Yeah, right. That's that's the vibe check. That's what checks out, right? No Daquan Finn, Craig Bull. I will not be gambling on this game. I will also not be likely live betting on this game either, unless Tucker Gleason starts absolutely slinging a pillow around the yard, and there's nothing Wyoming can do about it. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the Rely Quest Bowl. Let's go to Wisconsin catching 10 against LSU. Smokes. No Jaden Daniels. I don't know. Is Brian Thomas playing? I, I Malik Neighbors is playing the game, right? I thought they, he was. They, they said both of them are playing. He, he missed the practice for them at LSU. Well, Who knows what that's going to be? But 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 Kelly said both are playing. Wow. Yeah, I don't care who's starting a quarterback. If those two guys are playing in this game, I will be laying it with LSU minus ten. I'm not actually laying money. I'm just um, for our picks here on the show. I will be taking LSU minus ten, and I will not be looking back either. And I think this line is not even close to being enough. Yeah, I do think we're getting some value here. I think with the Jaden Daniels discount with him not playing, I don't think everyone really understands how good and how highly thought of. Garrett Nussmeyer is in college football circles. Obviously, Jaden Daniels you cannot understate how good he was for them this year. Heisman Trophy winner, do it all for them, running, passing, everything else for him. If he could play defense, he would have played for him. Um, but but 
Garrett Nussmeier is a dog. He's a guy that they really fought to, to hold on as a back quarterback, to be their quarterback of the future there at LSU. And obviously with BTJ and Malik Neighbors, huge big-time gets. Makai Wingo is back from injury. Holy cap. He was huge. He's better than Mason Smith this year by a lot. Yeah. By a lot. Now, now you got a couple of corners in the portal. I believe I saw Deuce Chestnut and Denver Harris. They have not played. See ya. at all. Yeah, they, they've See kind ya. of been in some trouble academically and, and I think with the team. And then also performance has not been great either. Um, yeah, I I think this this is going to be a blowout. Ten, 10 is way too low. I think we we know exactly who Wisconsin is. I, I think they can move the ball a little bit on LSU, but no Braylon Allen, no Tanner Bordellini up, up front for them at center. It, it really scares me for them. Jimmy, you got a couple wide receivers, Skylar Bell, Jameer DK. Both yeah. in the portal. No, no Tanner Bordellini means like you're getting Makai Wingo and Mason Smith. Just Makai Wingo, by the way, like if you understand like how good he is, watch the first half of the Florida State game and then watch the second half. You see Makai Wingo playing literally every single snap in the first half, right? And you see Florida State not being able to effectively move the ball because they're just getting smashed mm-hmm. up the middle. And then, oh no, Makai Wingo, after playing every single freaking snap in the first half, He's gassed. Shocker of the year. And he can't do much in the second half. And what do you know? But if Mason, I mean, if he's rotating in with the healthy space and Smith, if he if he's getting in there and he's rotating in there, he can absolutely wreak havoc in that backfield, I think. Mm-hmm. Not only are they 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 not deep at wide receiver, Wisconsin is losing a couple receivers, but you have Braylon Allen in the or out of the in the NFL draft. And also remember. The backup running back, Ches Malushi, very good in his own right. Lost for the season an injury early in the year. That can be down to a couple younger running backs for them. Obviously, they always have depth there, but that's something to be concerned about as well. I don't see it. I, I really don't see it for this team. Give me, give me, give me LSU minus 10 and a half, or minus 10, minus 14, minus 10, minus, minus 10 and a half. I nine. don't really care. Get enough smile or by Tigers by 90. Yeah, I, I agree. That this, yeah, and here's the thing. It, what, what does Wisconsin need to win this football game? They need they need Tanner Mordecai, Mordecai. to absolutely throw for 400 yards. Right? Well, and here's the deal. He, he's done that against plenty of group of five defenses, and to be honest, this LSU defense and that secondary, it's about as close as you're going to get in the SEC to a group of five secondary. So we will see. But I do think they're they're pretty upset with but how they, the But they're down ended. some receivers. That I... So I don't know. I I feel really, really good about this pick. It might sneak its way late into Dawson's Diner. If you aren't following us on Twitter, at the Richard Saw, I'll be letting you guys know tomorrow morning if this is going to be... Well, I guess this video comes out tomorrow morning. So I guess, yeah, you can either watch this video or if you want future picks, might have to slide us a follow at the Richard Saw. Make sure you're catching those because lines move. And they move fast. Get them while you can. Let's go to the cheese at Citrus Bowl. Let's talk about Tennessee. I have Joe Milton up there. But he will not be playing. It'll be Nico Amaliave. Let's see it. Nico. Against Let's Iowa. See it. Iowa catching six and a half. Wow. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. I was ready to lay it with Iowa. I was ready to take Iowa straight up. And then them actually saying Joe Milton was not going to be playing, it actually it had a negative effect on me. I thought because in the line dropped, like it dropped from like what was it like plus nine to six and a half, and I was like, "Are you crazy?" I'm like, "How did this line not move the other direction?" I'm like, "What I've seen from Nico, which is minimal action, I'm like, how much worse can it get?" Now here's the thing, Iowa freshman quarterback. That does not mix very terrible well. recipe. Terrible recipe right there. That they're going to confuse the absolute hoop out of Nico Maliata. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. By the way, if you're in the comments and you want to like spell out how I'm supposed to be pronouncing that, please let me know. I think I'm doing a good enough job. So we're just gonna like let it slide. All right, probably for now. But yeah, I mean, Iowa. Of course, you know Cooper Dejean or Dijon. It does not matter. It seems like. It did not matter in the last couple games. I, I, I think it does. So it does matter, I, I but like to, it, I, it didn't matter in the last couple games. Correct, correct. Even against Michigan, like th- that defense balled out 
they absolutely impressed the ever living crap out of me. It also encouraged me to select a certain side in a particular bowl game that we will have yet to talk about. For Tennessee, you got you got a lot of guys that you're missing on this team. No Tyler Barron, who's your best pass rusher by mm-hmm. far, right? You're not gonna have Wesley Walker starting safety. You're not gonna have Slaughter at corner. You're not gonna have Tamarian McDonald at corner. Now granted he hasn't played in a couple of weeks. No Joe Milton, no Jalen Wright, no Jabari Small. Now uh, they have a third string running back there. That's really, 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 really solid. So as a guy, Samson, Samson as a Texas AM fan, when I watched him play, I thought Samson was very, very good. So I'm not super concerned about the Jabari Wright. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, Jalen Wright, Jabari Small, Delio. But I think Iowa will confuse Nico. And I do think Iowa is going to Iowa their way to a victory. I will be taking them plus six and a half. And I will also be taking them to win straight up in this game, which is wild of me to say that. But I'm going to do it. And they 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 did it to Kentucky last year. They've done it to every single team this year, except Michigan, Minnesota, and well, Penn State. That's they, it. They did it to Minnesota, though. They just didn't win the football. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they've done it to pretty much every team. I expect them to do it again. But I expect them to possibly score with all these defensive opt-outs for Tennessee. Yeah, I don't know. I just I cannot see Iowa moving the football consistently against Tennessee. I just really can't. I do think Tennessee... Their defense is a little bit better than I think people give them credit for, or at least expected them at the beginning of this year. I think Iowa just is just whatever you think of them offensively is just a thousand times worse. The thing is, is explosive plays in the run games, that is their calling card. Let's play good defense, win the field position game. By the way, if Tory Taylor's playing, that's so huge for Iowa. I think it sounds like he will. Yeah. One last go for him there. He has been such a weapon for them. Um, I, I'm really excited to see Nico play. For Tennessee, see what he's got. I actually do like Joe Milton a little bit more than other people. I was low on him at the beginning of the year because I thought he was a little bit overrated. And now I think people have cooled on him a little bit too much and blamed a little bit too much of the problems that Tennessee's had on him. I think this is a really interesting matchup. I I don't know if Tennessee can run the ball as well as they would like to against that Iowa front. And they're going to have to lean on Nico a little bit more with some banged up wide receiver core. No Rue McCoy, no Dante Thornton couple of guys like it's tough it's tough sledding out there for nico and he's gonna be thrown into the fire right there very excited to see how he responds we saw a guy like jackson arnold true freshman talented guy makes some mistakes very up and down we love the promise that he showed at times there but obviously they threw six picks or had six turnovers and obviously lost the game against arizona and i the thing is if you're turning the ball over even two to three to four times against iowa you're not going to win the football game you cannot lose a turnover battle by that much and win a football game against a team like Iowa. Oh, I'm going to regret doing it, but I'm going to take Tennessee minus six and a half. I just cannot put my faith in Deacon Hill to move the football. It scares me to death that they're going to get a couple short touchdowns or long touchdowns, quick touchdowns, whatever you want to call it. And, um, and yeah, t- t- and Tennessee, you know, can't move the ball. It's going to be a very ugly stalemate type of game, but, you know what I'm here for? It. I I think football fans are gonna really enjoy it, and I, I think people are gonna be tuning in to see Nico play because that that is a real big deal. He is the the guy there for the future, hopefully for Tennessee, and uh, we'll love to see what he can do against a very respected Iowa defense. Let's go thick, big. Let's go to the Fiesta Bowl. Let's talk about our G five New Year's Six representative Liberty. Squaring up against Oregon, they are 16 and a half point underdogs against Oregon. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Y- you look at the strength of schedule, right? And-, and you look at Liberty's opponents and you think, wow, they did not necessarily play at a level of competition that you traditionally see a New Year's Six Bowl team play. They were undefeated against that competition. Their offense was absolutely amazing, led by Caden Salter. Jamie Chadwell led uh, offense as well. You know Jamie Chadwell's going to put up points. But that defense in some games was just really, 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 really abysmal, including New Mexico State. Bo Nix is going to be playing this game as far as I know. 
one last game for Bo Nix, and you know, and you know that they want him to get that completion percentage record all time. He's chasing it. I think they're going to absolutely be so dialed in for him. They're going to make it really easy. And when you make it easy for Bo Nix, and you're just hitting guys, you have better athletes on the field. If you get these guys in space, you are going to score. And if you got guys on defense, these athletes, they're going to absolutely shut down some dudes. So I'm uh, I'm all over. I'll take Oregon minus 16 and a half. If Liberty puts up a fight and they cover the spread, I will actually be really impressed. Yeah, I, I think this line is a little bit too low. Isn't it, What does that say that to you that this line here, if Vegas thinks this line is smaller than the line between Florida State and Georgia right now, I get it. A lot of opt-outs on both sides of the ball in, um, in the, the Orange Bowl down there. But this is the Fiesta Bowl, another New Year's Six game. Uh, you mentioned Bo Nix and Bucky Irving playing. Bucky Irving is a stud for them at running back. He's going to play. You mentioned they can just get the ball to him and really fly around. Tez Johnson, I believe, is playing as well. Troy Franklin hurts, but you know what? They've got guys there um, to make up for that. I don't know. I, I do think Liberty has some talent for sure, but we've seen what Oregon can do against teams that they are significantly more talented than. They just run it up on you, and they just don't look back. And the 16 can be covered just about by halftime and can be extended on to in the second half. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Now, some things that Liberty needs to do to win this ball game: Tackle. Just yeah, in space. Make, make tackles in space, which is very hard to do. Like, not a lot of teams have been able to do that against Oregon this year at all. That's why they've been so effective. So I both Nix has also looked like a really good quarterback. Not that he is a bad quarterback. He actually is a really good quarterback. But he's looked better because that run game is really effective against that offensive line. So things to look out for, though. Of course, a couple offensive linemen you're missing for Oregon. Mm-hmm. Can Liberty take advantage of that? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. So you're – I don't know that you're missing anyone super important for Liberty. Maybe Preston Hodge at corner. But Caden Salter is a dude. I'm excited to see, like, what he can do against his team, like, if he has, like, a really, 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 really good game, right, a lot of people are going to be saying, wait, why isn't he in the transfer portal? The answer is, <laughs> stay right exactly where you are. Play Jamie against, Chadwell. Play with Jamie Chadwell and do what Grace McCall didn't do and declare for the draft <laughs> when uh, when you're hot and your, your name is up there, you know. So I'm – I like Caden Salter a lot. Talked about him a ton this year. Talked about Liberty a ton. I just think they're going to be a little bit outclassed in this scenario. Yeah, Quinn. Yeah, Quinn Cooley and CJ Daniels, and other names to keep an eye out for, for sure for them. But yeah, you mentioned it, it's just going to be tough sledding for them. It's a very tough matchup for Liberty. Oregon's going to be pissed off after losing to Washington twice, getting robbed. They believe of a New Year's or of a college football playoff appearance, um, and obviously. Dan Lanning will have those boys humming come um, come come to Fiesta Bowl on January first. Now let's talk college football playoffs. Let's go to the Rose Bowl. Let's talk about Alabama. Let's talk about Michigan. Boy, oh boy, oh boy! I'm finally here. So I don't love to like giving the college football playoffs like the spotlight that it deserves a spotlight i don't love giving it you know when there's other things going on but now we're here so now we can spotlight it Mm -hmm. right it is a game it's a matchup against you know what's what's crazy is that in this game michigan is for some reason the villain yeah this is why these are both villains first time by the way the saban and bama they're kind of a new territory like like how is it going to motivate this team now obviously the point spread you can look at that very easy to motivate your team by being underdogs in this game. But you mentioned Michigan, a team very heavily scrutinized, very big spotlight put on that program with all the the the, the extracurricular activities involved with the scandals and spying and and all that other stuff. And obviously, not to mention Jim Harbaugh is a guy that is historically just very polarizing himself. Yeah, and and things like people will say like there are probably people in the comments like, well, Bama's a villain too in this scenario. They 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 looted out Florida State. I'm like, they didn't do anything to. They didn't do anything. The college football playoff committee is the ones that are the villains in that scenario, right? Yeah. Bama is not the villain. 
Uh, sure, they lost to Texas, but they won out and then also beat the number one team in the country in the SEC Championship. And they have a player that basically played himself after getting benched in week three, played himself into the conversation for being, what, sixth in the Heisman Trophy voting? Mm-hmm. So I'm just uh, – I'm all over that. I, I, in this scenario, think that Michigan's a good team. They're very good. And I've always said it. I've said it since the beginning of the season that they have so many guys in that offensive line that they trust starters, backups, whatever. I do think that it might catch up to them a little bit. This is a different front seven than they've – I mean, I'm not going to say a different front seven because they've played some really good front sevens. I'm going to say this is a different secondary. It's a really good front seven paired with – you have three All-Americans in that secondary. They're so good. Three all and, and they're deep too. Key and, and, turn, and all those guys back there. Some of those Sun Belt transfers are just, just so good. So I mean, Amos. yeah, and and I think Jalen Monroe will just like Michigan also has a pretty decent secondary as well. Like if Will Johnson can start locking down on on Jermaine Burden, I still think that Jalen Monroe can just make enough plays with his legs. I think Royce Williams. I think he's the better running back of the many running backs that Bama has in that backfield. I think he's better than Jam Miller. I think he's better than uh, Jason McClellan. I like Alabama in the spot. I I took them at plus two and a half when it was out because I thought that this line would actually cross zero. It is not, but it has moved down to one and a half, one in a lot of places. I'll go ahead and take Bama in this spot. I know Michigan was my preseason national championship pick, but I'm going to go ahead and take Bama in the spot. I think that they're just they're clicking at the right time, and I think they're more talented than this Michigan team. Yeah, it, it took them a while. You mentioned clicking at the right time. Michigan, a team that kind of, I wouldn't say limped to the finish line, but they were a team that was hot early, and they were smoking everybody they played against, looking fantastic, lighting up stat sheets, et cetera, et cetera. And then they kind of limped down the field with, you know, they struggled. I I wouldn't say struggled, but they kind of just took their time with beating Penn State. And then Maryland obviously was a close game. And then Ohio State, don't fault them for that at all. But they just like, and, and namely, I think a lot of the criticism has gone towards that passing game and J.J. McCarthy. And the thing is with Alabama is you're going to have to have an elite quarterback play against Alabama. You're going to have to beat him with his legs and with his arm in tight coverages, tight windows, under pressure. Is McCarthy up to that? Is he up to the task? I have no idea. I've seen it at times last year against Ohio State, very pressed. I've seen it in spots this year, certain drives or series where he has to get points or he has to get make big-time throws against Ohio State. He did. Other times, though, it it scares me because do they trust him, right? Like, like we talked about. I see what you're telling. I hear what you're telling me, but I also see what you do, right? I hear all the talk. JJ McCarthy, this. JJ McCarthy, that. He's improved his footwork. He's got a great arm. Now I see that all, right? I love it. But it's also like that Sean Moore and that offense coordinator staff, right? They just ran the ball at will in these big time games when they needed it most. And does that tell you what they think about McCarthy, or does that tell you what they're gonna do? What it takes to win, no matter what it is. And and I think it's a little bit of both, right? I don't think McCarthy is this fully polished guy, elite level quarterback play. I don't even know if he's the best quarterback in this football game. I think Milroe has actually been super impressed with what he's done, not only like developing as a passer, but using his legs to his advantage and not pretending to be a pocket passer when he can actually use his legs to his advantage. I don't know, man. I, there, there's so much to break down in this game. I, this is this awesome matchup. Coaching staffs, style of play, brands. Old school, new school, all that other good stuff. The SEC Big Ten, they're out in the West Coast there in an iconic Pasadena Stadium in the Rose Bowl. It is such a treat there. I just want to urge you guys to just soak it in right on on January 1st. This is going to be an incredible game. I think a four-quarter battle, one-and-a-half-point spread. This is exactly what everyone dreams about when they play college football. Like It's this kind of game with these two teams and all the NFL talents there. I don't know. With that being said... Oh, I just have a weird feeling. And I, I think Bama, honestly, they were pretty much my national championship pick when we were talking about the SEC. I'm going to do what you did. I'm going to I'm gonna switch here. I'm going to go Michigan. I think this Wow, is- the switcher. So your preseason pick and my preseason pick are playing right now, and we're both flipping sides. Yeah, and I think, I don't know, man. If you told me Bama was in the playoffs, I think everything clicked, and they got it right eventually with the old line. And I'd be like, oh, Bama, by 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 easily right but i think michigan is a team of destiny right now and i just think what they've done and, and all the, the negative noise and whatnot 
and coming back after two straight years of getting embarrassed in the college football playoffs, they are ready for this moment. They're going to get a win. Jim Harbaugh needs this. He wants this before he does whatever he does with the rest of his career. I think they can run the football. I think they can move the ball. I think they can get after Milrow and really give havoc to the O-line that dominated the Georgia front. And to be honest, I didn't, was not all super impressed with Georgia front this year. I, I think Michigan had a better front than them. And I think that'll show in this game. It's I think Texas be a, has a better front. It, when than, you saw that in week two, but obviously much different O-line, much different Milrow and passing attack, thanks in large part to Tommy Reese um, with, with, with Alabama there and their, and their growth and development throughout the year. But yeah, I, I just think Roman Wilson makes some big time plays. There's gonna ah uh, Donovan Edwards. We we didn't even talk about the running backs here with Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards. Blake Corum just doesn't look the same. Like it's a tough injury to come back for. I get it. Very happy for him. Very successful guy. Still runs super hard. Still very hard to bring down. Does not have that fourth gear, sixth gear that he used to have to break away from teams and players. I think Edwards has that. I think Donovan Edwards is that guy where he can turn a corner and bust a long run against a very good front and secondary and d- defense in general for Alabama. Very physical, what Kevin Steele's done for them um, all year and developing them after a rough start of the year with Texas and then getting there, playing better against Ole Miss, struggling against LSU a little bit, but who hasn't, and then really buckling down against a very good Georgia team offensively. So, yeah, what 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 else you got for this game? Well, I, I look at this and I also think about if you if you're the vibe check, right? We talk about the vibe check here. They're in their they're in their meeting room. College football playoffs rankings are being announced. Yep. Oh yeah. And you look at the faces of some of those players on Michigan when they saw that they drew Bama instead of Florida State. There was not a lot of excitement. Now now it could have been the the Bama, the, the shape and the hey, been there, done that. That's what they do. That's Bama's thing, yeah. right? Yeah. But it just looked like that Michigan, they, they seemed a little bit, it's almost like they'd lost before they've even played the game. Now, that can be dangerous because, you know, sometimes it, maybe maybe it was a Bama thing. Maybe maybe Jim Harbaugh was like, hey, we're, look, we're going to respectfully clap for whatever, whatever name pops up on their screen, and then we're going to go take care of our business, which I could definitely see happening as well. But I'll, uh, I'll say Bama passes the vibe check for me. For sure. Well, you know, this is all business for them. But I do think that same thing we said with Michigan. I didn't see a quote from one of their defensive leaders um, from Michigan that, that said, hey, listen, it was more of a shock that, that Florida State didn't get in over Bama. It wasn't that we wanted to play Florida State. It was that we were just kind of surprised with the committee and, and right. the choice. Obviously, right, right. that's what you're going to say. Not much say. It. But obviously, you ask any Michigan player, any Michigan fan, they're going to want to play Florida State over Alabama. And and that's not really a question. I don't think that's a surprise considering Florida State's almost twenty point dogs to a team that Bama just beat. Yeah, I I, I don't know. I, I I this is this is an awesome game though. This is a very awesome game. Key player of the game right here on call right now, Colson Loveland, tight end from Michigan. I think he really makes some plays for them down the stretch on third down. When when they need to play, he he gets it for them. And McCarthy finds him, and then they do some big things there. In the red zone, and then also obviously on third down. Yeah, I'll say uh, they have Malachi Moore playing in the slot. Yeah, I think that's Bama's key player. I think he has to play well for Bama to win. Dude, but he's a little small though. That, that's what worries me. Not Brian Branch. Brian Branch six two. I know, but I'm, I'm saying he's got to play well for, for yeah. Bama to win this. Well, game. And he comes down in the run sport just so well. Malachi Moore does everything for them. He he rotates back, plays top free safety. He plays strong safety, net goal. He'll play a little bit outside as well. It, it, it's it's a really very flexible defense that they got back there, even with the young guy, Caleb Downs, and Terry Arnold, who's a first-year starter as well. It, it's it's a special defense there in the secondary. Let's go to the Sugar Bowl. Let's talk Texas, who is laying four points against Washington. I think matchup-wise, matchup-wise, I think both of these teams <laughs> offensively are nightmares mm-hmm. for the other team. I think Texas, uh, which is a much more physical up front, uh, you know, rock and sock them in your mouth. They can do that, but also they're balanced to where, like, when yours can pass the ball. Like, the, their offense is balanced to the point where I think it, it becomes a problem for Washington, where they can't, like, load the box or they can't uh, sit back in coverage. I, 
that that becomes a problem for them. Texas, on the other hand, their secondary has been the weak link for them with defensively. Their front seven has been fantastic this year. It has been fantastic, but Michael Penix is absolutely prone to slicing and dicing some of these secondaries this year, like he has done all season, minus the Arizona State game. He's done that pretty consistently and well. You also got just who I thought was deserving of the Blitnikoff Award, Roma Dunze, who was absolutely there in every moment, making every contested catch, running every great route, making every big-time touchdown you could possibly need from a guy. He's always there. He is always there in every moment when you need him. And also, like, this run game was not there at the beginning of the season, and Dylan Johnson all of a sudden has it, has it exploding. And I thought an Oregon team was going to shut down that run game. Dylan Johnson exploded in that game, and he continues to explode. Now, Texas's run defense is, in my opinion, the best in the country. Yeah. Is that crazy to say? <laughs> I, no, it's Christopher Whispers, Iowa. And I'll go uh, to Texas for sure. I I think it's up there. Uh I'm thinking about it. I'll just say it and I'll I'll ride with it. Up front that they have some absolute studlies, studlies up there in the interior. I think they're just so good. So it's gonna be hard maybe to run the ball with Dylan Johnson, but uh Tavondre Sweat. I mean, what are we even talking about? Byron Murphy. Byron, oh, just what, unbelievable players. Unbelievable players. I'm going to love. Uh, here's the thing. I know Washington is going to win, but I'm going to take Texas here against every single bone in my body. The Aggie in me, the, the, the gut feeling in me, I have to take Texas here. I think they're a better football team. I really do. And, and I do think that Texas is also a problem forever they play in the championship. I think Texas is a legit, legit contender to win this national championship. And I don't think I don't know if people are ready for that. I don't know if people are ready for that. This is Texas's first time in the playoffs. They're the only team in the playoffs this year where this is their first playoff game. But I think I think they're ready. I think they're ready. I think Washington might be more ready. Like in terms of like the experience that they have on that team, the coaching staff, they just win games. They just win games. But Goodness gracious, if you're going to give Steve Sarkeesian a month to prepare for this game, like, watch out. I know Washington's got a great coaching staff there. I love Ryan Grubb. I love Kalen DeBoer. But do not do not give Steve Sarkeesian a month to prepare for this Washington's defense. Yeah, it, for all the reasons you mentioned, we, we love Washington on this show. I, I, I love, love Washington. Michael Penix, you mentioned Roma Dunze. They got Paul McMillan's finally healthy. Dylan Johnson's stud. I love their old line. I like their old line. Their defense well, is pretty risky. Didn't they win the Joe Morgan Award? Yeah, but that's also it's fraudulent. Whatever. What a stupid award. Re- regardless, though, they, they do enough there. And they, they played some pretty good fronts up there in the Pac-12. Nothing like they're going to see here in Texas. I do think you mentioned people are not ready to, to, to really consider Texas as being a national championship contender, even though they are four-point favorites in this college football playoff semifinal game. When they are playing their best football, they are the best team in the country. I do think they have the highest ceiling in the country of anybody else. With the way Quinn Ewers can spread the rock around, with the just embarrassment of riches they have, even without a guy like Jonathan Brooks, where they go 3-4 deep at running back, 3-4 deep at wide receiver. You got a stud tight end. I love your O-line. Your defense in the front seven is just so disruptive and that can take over any football game. The secondary is tough, though. Here's what I have a hint, though. I've got a little hunch here. I think Malik Muhammad. A true freshman so guy. Oh, good. He's going to get more run in this game because I do think Ryan Watts, who's coming back from injury, which I believe is still going to be okay to, to make it, and Terrence Brooks, I think Watt, I think Muhammad's going to get some run there as Matthews bowing his head down. He, he's very upset that AM I lost him to flip over to, to Texas. He's a monster. He's been a stud for them in the true freshman. He's unreal. And I think he's going to make some plays in this game that, that on third down and whatnot that Washington's going to see him and try to exploit him, but no, no, no. He'll get it done there. I just I think Quinn Ewers plays out of his mind. I I think they run the football. I I don't think they blow away blow him away for it, but I do think this is the best football team in the country right now. It's Texas, and here's the thing. Yeah, that they're my pick. That my bull my bull pick. If if you're in the uh, Richard sophomore, you know uh, bull pool, we appreciate you guys a lot. 
and probably to everyone's shock, Texas was my pick for the national championship. Yeah. Yeah, I did, which is pretty surprising. I, I was here, Mr. Horns down himself, but uh, no, this is no bias. This is legit analysis. This is legit how he feels. It's legit analysis. A, a, Tex- I'm sorry, it's not Dane. The Texas Longhorns, right? UT Hook'em Horns are a really, really complete football team. Uh, I love the way Sarkeesian has them homing right now. They're O line, D line. They do it right up front. I don't, but it's also, like, I'm going to take Texas. I'll take the four, whatever. But Washington is just, you just can't count them out, though. You cannot count them out. You cannot tell me that Penix and those guys are not going to be ready to play and just grind it out. And it's a tough matchup. The one weak spot on Texas, the one weak spot on them might be their secondary. It, it probably is. It probably is. I think it gets better in this month. I really do. I think Muhammad comes in and makes some big-time plays for him. Right? But, and that, that's what they do so well. He's a true freshman All-American. Yeah. Yeah. No, he, he, he's, a, he's He's no longer a freshman, too, by the way. I mean, when, once the clock hits, you know, midnight, it, he's no longer. He is no longer a freshman. No. He's a stud is what he is. And I am, I will, there, there are a couple players that I will forever be very upset about flipping from a and right? And Malik Muhammad is, I believe, actually on the absolute top of that list. Was, was Perkins in that list? Or? Perkins is in that list. That's Harold Perkins. That, that, that's oof. Real quick, though, I do want to ask your opinion about, obviously, Malik Murphy hitting the portal and going to Duke. Congrats to him. Congrats to Duke. You're getting a fantastic player, very talented player, with some experience there for for Texas this season without the loss of Quinn Ewers. Quinn Ewers is a guy that's been a little bit injury-prone in his career. Does this make a difference? We have to talk about it because Arch Manning's involved, whatever. But does this make a difference? Yeah, I guess. But, like, look, if either of these quarterbacks goes down, right, the other team it will win the football game. Do you think Do you think Malik Murphy can – let's say let's say Quinn Ewers gets, goes down – went down for, like, season-ending injury, whatever, like, and they win this game. Can Malik Murphy win a national championship game? Like, is that going to I don't know. Wins? I don't know that he can win a national championship. I think he can win this game for sure. I don't, can, I don't know that he can win a that. I don't think he could beat Bam. No. Not not a spot start, I don't think. Well, I, maybe Michigan. Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, who knows who's playing that game. But, yeah, that that's the thing. I, I do think it does matter a little bit. Now, obviously, it's hypothetical. You can't predict injuries. It sucks that he's not there. They're going to be doing what they can to get Arch Manning ready. It sounds like he's playing a lot better football than we last saw him in that spring game. But, uh, yeah, it's 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 uh, it sucks. The, the calendar, hopefully Murphy, no hard feelings there. I think the Texas faithful understands exactly what he did for them this year and what he needs to do for himself going forward. Um, but, yeah, it, it's tough. Let's move over to Dawson's Diner, everyone's favorite segment to lose money. But guess what? We're on the bounce back this week. I took Bama plus two and a half. If you weren't following us at the Richard Sophomore at on Twitter, you did not get this at two and a half. I'm so sorry. It's at one and a half now. That was right I'm, when it came out, I'm right? Just, like, yeah. Yeah. It, no, I right when it came out, when, right when those lines came out, I, we, we put that one out on Twitter. So make sure you're following us at the Richard Soft. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see it right here where I'm pointing at. If you're on Spotify. At the Richard Soft. I uh, hope you can sound that one out for yourself. Uh, I, two and a half. I mean, three is not a key number. Or sorry, key three is a key number. Two is not necessarily a key number. It is if you go to overtime. So, like, with the new overtime rules, yeah. like, it kind of is a key number. Which would be a travesty. Which would be a travesty to decide a college football playoff game yeah. with those overtime rules. Yeah. Now, here's what I'll say. I'm taking that two and a half. If you take it at one and a half, I am not responsible. For an Alabama loss by two. All right. Uh, I'll also take Iowa State minus 10 and a half against Memphis. We talked about it earlier. We both really like it a lot. The backdoor cover is certainly in play in that game, which I hate, but I'll still take it because I think there's value there. Yeah, you better believe there's probably going to be coming some some stuff coming. Watch out for that LSU line. If it dips below 10, you better believe your bottom dollar. I will be scooping that up with every single dollar I have to my name. But yeah, so that that's that's Dawson's Diner for me. That is the end of uh, 2023 Bull Game Previews Part 3. Oh, that says Part 3. We're in Part 4. What am I doing? Gosh, the, the producer today is absolutely out of his gosh darn mind. But we thank you guys so much for tuning in. We can't wait to see you guys like our video because if you like the content, you like the video, right? That, that's kind of the rule we have around here, right? Make sure you guys are subscribed if you want to catch more. 
Uh, we're going to be talking about the national championship game, of course, after this week and all this stuff happens. We'll also be talking about transfer portal, coaching carousel, recruiting. There's so much going on. Thank you guys so much. And uh, slight personal announcement, I will also be working part-time for Texags this upcoming spring semester. So uh, I'm excited to be more introduced, more submersed into the – collegiate athletic realm so thank you guys so much thank you very much for that opportunity at tech sags cd anything for you no do what you said like and subscribe obviously contact us comment at us follow us on twitter all that good stuff you know we love talking with you interacting with you guys our numbers have been awesome on the channel we love the support and we'll continue to grind out as the best content we can for you guys yeah i believe we hit a record in a 48 hour period we had 1,400 people view our channel, so thank you so much. But we still only have 150 subscribers of those 1,400 people. Can you believe that? Mm -hmm. So make sure you guys subscribe as well. So we'll see you guys in the next one.